While I was putting this ribbon synth together, I thought to myself, it could be fun to use this sensor for scrubbing through an audio recording. The idea is to program a synth like this that can record an audio input and play it back. And I would like to control the playback position with the ribbon sensor and make it a standalone instrument with the daisy seed. So let's build a DIY sampler instrument. Hi, this is Takumi. I hope you're doing well. Okay, what should I do first? I think the first task is to program a simple sampler in plug data on my desktop and flash the daisy once it's working. In the patch, we need an audio input, something to record and store the input, and a way to play back that sample. So ADC tilde is going to be the audio input. I'm just going to use the laptop microphone for now. And this array object is going to be the buffer that stores the recorded audio input. The first thing to do is to give the array a name, which I creatively called sampler, and put the size as 96,000. Why that number? Our sample rate is 48,000, so the size 96,000 samples equals to a two second long buffer. Tabrite tilde records its audio input into the aforementioned array buffer with the press of a button. And tab read for tilde plays back the recording by outputting specific individual samples from the buffer. This phaser tilde generates a linear ramp from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 over a certain amount of time. In this example, 0.5 Hz, which is 2 seconds. And if I multiply that output by 96,000, all 96,000 samples are played from the first to last within 2 seconds, which will play back the recording exactly as it was recorded. Okay, let's test this out. When you press this button, it will record for the length of the buffer, which is 2 seconds, and then stops recording. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. If we change the frequency to 1 Hz, which is 1 second, the recording is played back twice as fast, resulting in... 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Chipmunk. Okay, now I'm getting locked in with programming, so I don't want to put together the hardware just yet. So I'll use the daisy pod, which comes with common components like the audio jacks and knobs already connected to the daisy seed. I like the pod for rapid prototyping and not worrying about the hardware side of things early on. Currently, this patch won't work after being flashed to Daisy because I need a physical button for starting the recording and another for playback. Luckily, the pod comes with two buttons, so I'll use button one for recording and button two for turning the volume on off. And while at it, let's have one of the LEDs light up for two seconds while the recording is happening and the other LED for playback states. Now all we need to do is choose pod as the board, put the seed into bootloader mode, and flash. For this project, I will use the line level input for my hardware synth. And playback. Nice! Okay, 2 seconds is a little too short. Let's try 4 seconds. All we need to do is just increase the array size, right? And make sure to adjust this delay. Oh, and change the phaser tilde frequency. And let's flash. Uh oh, I'm not getting any sound. And the LED isn't lighting up either. I think the issue is that the set buffer size is too big for the flash memory. Let's instead use the SRAM, which is much larger. In the compiler setting, I can change the app type to SRAM and choose this file for the custom linker. Because the C needs to use the DAISY bootloader when using the SRAM, which you can read more about here, Plug Data conveniently installs it if it's not currently installed on the seed. Okay, let's flash. Cool, it seems to be working. It can definitely be much longer than 4 seconds, but this will do. Besides, you really don't want to hear me play a synth for longer than 4 seconds. Okay, I know what you're thinking. This sampler is a bit boring. And you're right. I don't have any control over the playback. So let's put together a granular synth with playback position control. What's a granular synth? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's my favorite synthesis technique. Granular synthesis is where you play a small portion of a recording. So rather than playing from start to finish, you may, for example, only play 50 milliseconds from the middle of the sample. This is the grain. And if you have a bunch of grains that are not in sync from each other, you get this beautiful cloud of sounds.
I'm excited to learn how to put one together with Pure Data. So I'm gonna watch this tutorial by QCG Interactive Music and see if it's helpful for this project. I'll be right back. Yeah, that was really helpful. So here's a patch that I put together. Because mine samples recorded live input, I'll use the recording patch from earlier. And I added a ramp at the beginning and end of the recording to prevent clicking. Okay, here's how the granular synth portion works. The vast majority of it is from that tutorial, so I recommend that you watch it if you would like a deeper explanation. Playback button turns on the metro, which generates a grain every 65 milliseconds. Duration is random for each grain. Speed, which also changes the pitch, can be controlled with knob 1. I have a counter here that loops from 1 to 8 and the value increments every grain generation. So first grain starts playing, and the next after 65 milliseconds, and so on. By the time 8th grain starts playing, the first grain should be ready to be played again. In QCG's tutorial, Clone was used to have multiple instances of the grain abstraction. Because that object is not supported by the heavy compiler, which is needed for DAISY, that's why I put together this counter approach, which luckily worked out. So I have 8 separate grain abstraction inside of this granular synth abstraction. The content of the grain abstraction is pretty much the same as QCG's. So a grain is a tiny portion of the recorded sample that is played back according to three parameters, start position, duration, and speed. This portion generates the envelope, which determines how the grain volume changes over time. The main difference with this grain is that I use line tilde instead of V-line tilde, which is not supported by heavy. One final important aspect is knob 2, which changes the start position of each grain. So you can twist the knob to move around the audio sample. Okay, I'm gonna flash and see if this works on the daisy. It's working. Now that I'm confident that my patch works, I'm gonna put together the circuit on the breadboard. So I need two audio jacks, one knob for pitch, one button, and one LED. And instead of controlling the position with a knob, let's use a ribbon sensor. I'll adjust the patch so that the sound is on only when I have my finger placed on the ribbon sensor, which means I don't need a button nor LED for the playback. And let's connect these to the daisy seed. If you would like to learn more about how components like these are connected to the seed, please watch the hardware portion of these videos on the Daisy Duino playlist. Awesome, success! Well, that was fun. I learned a lot putting this project together. To make this instrument even more fun, you could add a speaker, which you can learn more about from this video. Thank you for watching and take care. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <And> take care. <laughs> <And> take care. <laughs>